Welcome in. Let's talk about the weekend. It's Thursday already, but let's begin it early. What would you say? I'm game for that. <laughs> let's do. It's summertime, at least above the equator. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Yes, we're going to set up today, tomorrow, and through the weekend. There's not much. We'll be back for Ray Merriman on Saturday, but I'm going to continue my little hiatus. I didn't realize how badly I needed it, so thank you for a couple of days off. I'm going to take one more. But we have business to do today, and that is the first aspect of the day is Mercury conjoining Venus in the later degrees of Leo. Now, I'm going to mention the video podcast that I did today, or the video that I did today that's on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. It shows all of this and what I'm going to talk about with the United States chart here in just a minute it shows everything. So you might want to. This is where the visual complements the audio. But Venus, remember, is in retrograde in all of those areas that we love, that we cherish, that we possess, that we accumulated all of it under the microscope of retrograde. So this means that for the next six weeks, we really don't know where somebody else is in their space. They might be dealing with some trigger stuff under the surface and putting on the game face. But if Mercury gets a hold of your tongue and Mercury can be a little bombastic, especially in Leo, you might say something that you kind of wish you could have taken back. Well, this would be a really good time not to do that. Count to five. Do it through the weekend. Then Mercury will be on back home in Virgo, and it'll just be as happy as it can. It's already taking its shoes off, and it's just chilling, listening to old soul, new soul astrology episodes that it needs to catch up on. <laughs> That's what a good Mercury does when it's home in Virgo. Listens to Robert Glasscock. Now, at 8.30, Luna moves into Sagittarius, so that heaviness you've been feeling over the couple of last few days lightens up. But one of the things, and I show this on the video, too, Sitting right there with it is the part of fortune. How cool is that? The rabbit's foot in your pocket, both moving into Jupiter-ruled Sagittarius. So we've got a blank checkbook for the weekend. Be sure to fill it in carefully, but you could take advantage of that because you have Jupiter and the part of fortune and the moon on your sides. So you'd say, what do you really, really want? What would make you really happy inside? You know what this would be a great weekend for? Vision board project. Yes, absolutely. Create a vision board. Perfect energy for it this weekend. You'll thank me later. <laughs> All right, let's roll into Friday because this is really the big one. Happens at 2.34 in the afternoon. I'm going to say this and you're going to, if you're on the ball, you'll say, wait a minute, Thomas. Didn't that already happen? Yes, it did. Pluto squares the nodes of the moon again. It happened at 5.30 Tuesday morning. Well, it happens again here now. Well, that brings us right back to the points of transformation. And this is where I kind of went off on this little uh, dog leg to the left, if you will, on the video podcast. And I'll tell you what it is here in just a second. But this is where I showed it. And it really is telling visually something I stumbled onto while I was reading about something else. And I just thought, hmm, want to look at that, especially with Pluto in retrograde heading back to its original place in the United States chart again but here we are today for the second time in four days squaring each other the nodes of the moon and Pluto. That has just a deep and I think very important theme of transformation about it, especially because Pluto and the nodes of the moon are sitting right on their respective sign changes. Before Pluto turns direct on October 11th, it will retrace back to its original degree point in the United States chart. For you and me, we would look at our later degrees of Capricorn or right around the early degrees or the cusp of Aquarius. What do you have there? Well, that's what's being lit up right now for you. Then you could look at aspects. What do you have at 27, 28, 29, 0 degrees Capricorn going into Aquarius? Do you have any aspects to 29 degrees? Because that would also show up here. So see, Friday night when Mercury enters Virgo, and then Saturday when the moon moves into Capricorn from Sagittarius, boom, boom, it hits those points. Now here's what I was looking at on the United States chart. So again, I just would say go to the Fun Astrology channel on any of those social media platforms and you can see the video. But what caught my attention was the market crash of October 29th, 1929, that of course began the Great Depression. The economy had been souring for most of over a year, really, before that happened. 
That was the crescendo, the tipping point, the breaker, the, well, there it blew kind of moment. And I was reading up about Evangeline Adams, which we mentioned in the current Old Soul, New Soul podcast. That was her era. She was working in New York City. She was advising a lot of important people. She kind of had a lock on astrology back on her day. It was really incredible. But Pluto, on October 29th, 1929, was right on top of the United States Sun and Mercury in Cancer. And that put it in a Pluto opposition from the original point in 1776. Opposite, on the other side of the chart, right on top of the Sun and Mercury. And the nodes of the moon were in the signs that they just left. The south node was in Scorpio, and the north node was in Taurus. Massive transformation. Over the next 10 years, the whole monetary system of the United States, which is ruled by powerful Pluto in the second house of money, was transformed. Now, what I'm scratching my head with is that now that Pluto is for the fourth time going to come back and hit that degree point, and on top of that, twice this week, it has squared the nodes of the moon. You know, that's where I'm wondering, is where's the transformation? And this isn't just for the United States. This is all of us. I'm just using this one analogy because it showed up so clearly. But this aspect is for everybody around the world. In fact, headline Israel, former prime minister, says, We are going into a civil war now. And, of course, Robert Glasscock and the solar arc practicums that he talks about often on Old Soul, New Soul took a look at the upcoming Saturn, solar arc Saturn, is going to land right on top of the United States natal Mars the end of next year, right around the eclipses and the election. If you've been listening around here for a while, you know how seriously he takes that aspect and how he interprets it. So this is why, even though this weekend we won't be doing Level Up, we'll be back with that next weekend for the next three weekends straight, and then we're going to be doing them three out of four weeks during the month of sending healing positive energy into the world, but also for ourselves. And I think that's the most important thing we do with all of this, is we recognize this is highly transformative energy in the world. From Venus in retrograde, everything we value inside, everything that means something dear to us is under the microscope of reevaluation right now. And also we have this powerful, signature of Pluto twice intersecting the nodes of the moon. Take that seriously. Uh, I am, and I think it's worth making special note. All right. Wow. You've got some work to do. Enjoy your vision board. I'd love to see them next week. <laughs> we'll have to have show and tell. All right. You guys have a good one. Love you. See you Saturday.